echolocation is a bit like bats and um, dolphins. Oh. So you produce a sound uh -huh. and then you hear the echoes after they bounce off your surroundings. Mm -hmm. So walls, doors mm -hmm. um, and things. People who are blind for a long time mm -hmm. are more aware of their other senses so they, so they hear better. I mean, the ears are the same, but mm -hmm. I think they use more brain power or something mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. analyze the sounds. Mm -hmm. Hello, welcome to Thailand Today. I'm Kusuma Yota Usually, humans have the ability to detect objects in their environment by sensing echoes from those objects. In many countries, the training to orient by the echolocation has been developed to help the blind identity objects within their surroundings. In Thailand, students from the Foundation for the Blind under Her Majesty the Queen Petonage have recently undergone training to adapt this technique in their daily lives. Today, Associate Professor Dr. Mom Luong Thaya Gitiyakon, Head of the Gastroenterology and Hepatology Division, Echolocation, Mahidon University, Faculty of Medicine, Rama Tibadi Hospital, who has played a key role in this project, will tell us more about this development. We are honored to welcome Associate Professor Dr. Mong Luong Thaya Kiti Yagon. He is the head of the Gastroenterology and Hepatology Division, Faculty of Medicine, Rama Tibadi Hospital, and Mahidon University. Sawadika, very welcome to Thailand Today program, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you. Well, today is one of the important day. We are talking about one important sickness the people do not like to face it at all in life, right? So, um, doctor, you are also a doctor. So the, the blind in Thailand, there's a lot of them. What's, what is the number of the, the blind in Thailand? Uh, there are quite a few uh, blind people. Mm -hmm. I think um, from the information that I've read, about 500,000 uh, mm -hmm. people who are blind oh. or legally blind. Um, some may not be completely blind, but have low vision. Uh -huh. um, but uh, yeah. that's the number that's on the website. Mm -hmm. yes. So um, we normally thinking that once you're blind, it's blind. You, there is nothing at all to come and help them to secure or what you call to to make them a better, have a better life. Yes. What a way. So you are as a volunteer. Uh, why do you come into this? Uh, we have um, my hospital, Rama yeah. Tibidi Hospital, uh -huh. is situated opposite the foundation uh -huh. uh, to help the blind okay. uh, of Thailand. Yes. So they're just across the road. Okay. So we um, see a lot of blind people mm. walking around. Mm. Um, so it, I thought it's an op opportunity uh -huh. to, to, to help. It, yes. It's happened that you will see them? You just happen to see them and then you got the well, feeling of doing something? I actually saw a documentary about uh, 10 years or eight years ago uh. um, concerning this young, young boy or young gentleman called Ben Underwood, okay. who was blind, uh. but he was able to use his uh, sound, um, understanding the echoes and the sound, that, so he was able to navigate mm. in his world um, mm. quite freely. So I thought that was a very good uh, skill to have, mm. um, and I thought, you know, uh -huh. we should try to get that to Thailand. Well, uh -huh. actually, at the beginning, I thought it was a talent yes. that um, was special to him. Uh -huh. And then I saw um, a TED talk um, uh, by a by a gentleman uh, by a man called um, Daniel Kish okay. uh, from the USA, mm -hmm. who said that he taught this skill um, mm -hmm. called echolocation. Mm -hmm. So I contacted him, and uh, it, oh, it went nice. from there. Yeah. You, our audience in 177 countries worldwide, you may not uh, know that what we are talking about is, is uh, um, Dr. Thaya is um, uh, trying his best uh, to trying to get the blind 
having something in life at least, you know, to get into the environment, sensing echo or something. So that's called echolocation. So please explain briefly okay. on this, please. Okay. So echolocation is a bit like bats and um, dolphins. Oh. So you produce a sound oh. and then you hear the echoes after they bounce off your surroundings. Mm -hmm. So walls, doors mm -hmm. um, and things. And, um, and then you can understand your surrounding. Mm. Uh, so like there's a wall on the left, a mm. door on the right, mm. whatever. So, so mm. it's understanding the echoes to mm. find out what your surroundings are like. Mm. So. Very interesting. So, but, but with the eye closed, but normally I don't know how to take this in, but uh, they, they, they know by the instinct, right? Um, so I think from, uh, from experience, I think uh, sighted people would mm. rely less on this because they have their eyesight. Mm. Yes. Um, I think people who are blind for a long time mm. are more aware of their other senses, so they, mm. so they hear better. I mean, mm. the ears are the same, but mm. I think they use more brain power or something mm. to mm. analyze the sounds. Mm. Um, and so they can understand uh, mm. the sounds a bit better than us. Mm. Um, some people echolocate naturally, mm. whereas others may need a bit of training. Mm. Um, but uh, I think blind people pick it up faster than, than we. <laughs> I mean, I can't. I tried, but I can't hear the echoes. I don't think at all. a bit because <laughs> <laughs> you. So when we talk about technique, yes, this is a technique. Technique means you use what practicing or yes. equipment. Yes, uh, it's practicing. So in fact, the teaching there's. Um, the project itself is trying to make echolocation teachers in uh, Thailand yeah. um, because uh, mm. um, Daniel Kish and his team can, can't stay in Thailand mm. forever mm. Um, and it would be too costly to mm. ask him to come and train oh. every single one. Uh -huh. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to train, uh, train up some, some Thai teachers, uh -huh. some Thai blind teachers yes. who will help with echolocation. Uh -huh. um, but actually echolocation itself is only one of the skills um, in the whole project. Mm. Uh, it's actually trying to improve the freedom of movement mm. or, or navigational freedom mm. in their lives mm. for the blind people. So mm. um, there's a few skills that are included. So one is echolocation, mm -hmm. uh, two is cane use. Um, the, the, the team actually have a longer cane and slightly different method of using the cane, the white oh, cane. The, uh, walking um, yes, like, the walking oh. cane. And um, the last thing is actually the cognition, the, the mental mm. strategies mm. Uh, needed to find your way and find your way back. Mm. So like mm. mapping, mm. mental mapping mm. of the area <coughs> and uh, landmarking important places. Mm -hmm. I think uh, as sighted people, uh, and certainly myself, I wasn't mm. aware how difficult it would be for a blind person mm. to to remember where they're going or mm. to strategize the routes that they're going. Mm. Um, but thinking about it, you know, they can only they can only realize um, things within their reach, mm. Um, mm. and it's very difficult to yes. to know if this area is the same as that area uh, um, mm. without feeling for it. Yes. But this echolocation will help them to, uh, uh, to know roughly, um, you know, the wall is here, this is a narrow passage, uh, um, there's something, uh, you know, further on to the right or whatever. So it helps them to landmark and, and mm. make maps in their mind mm. um, to travel. The, what level of the blind to get to learn this technique? Well, at the moment, um, we're, because we're focusing on um, building up teachers, so we oh. want uh, students or, or the, our, our teacher trainees to be the most likely to be able to pick up the skill. Mm. So we've chosen blind or nearly, very nearly blind, completely mm. blind mm. Um, people to oh, come completely. and train. Oh, okay. um, but from talking to the trainers from World Access to the Blind, which mm. is the, yes. the organization from America, mm. they, they said that uh, even partially blind people can, can learn as well, and, mm. and even some sighted people, mm. but with training. Mm. But we've selected mainly completely blind or 
very nearly. Mm -hmm. How about the accuracy, the or determination of the objects or location and size of things? Uh, they say that they can, you know, say roughly what the size is, uh, okay. what the shape is, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. even sometimes the texture, uh, what the composition is. Mm -hmm. So uh, marble, for marble, we went ah. to what um, uh, Benja Marble Pit, ah. and they said that the temple there, the the actual building, was uh, very echogenic. So very, the echoes were very loud oh. because I think it's made out of marble oh. and that's a very dense material so they can okay. hear their echoes. Oh. Uh, one of the teachers uh, was able to determine that the sala, mm. the, the small pavilion, uh, pavilion uh -huh. um, was actually not made out of wood which the sighted people thought it was. Well, uh, it was out of um, artificial wood, like concrete or whatever. But, but, so. but uh, 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 Norman eyesight thinking that thought, it's yes, it was wood I thought, and, and, and he said oh it's not wood um, because it, it, the reflection is different mm. and I think they said that they could determine glass as well mm. different sort of sound so but I think uh, that's a very skilled level mm. so at the, at the moment people are just detecting if there are large objects mm. in the way so um, they can walk around and mm. they can sort of hear a park car mm. in front so they just swerve around. Mm, interesting, so. very interesting. This is such a good news. Yes. It's a great news actually. So so uh, uh, so let let me have uh, this I'm a layman with this but so you chose the people, the blind, yeah. and then start training them with uh, some specific training okay. needed. Yes. So can you So yeah. I didn't choose them all by myself. Mm. Um, so what I did was to contact the uh, school networks okay. for the blind. All right. So the um, the ne uh, the school for the blind in Piyatai oh. um, and the Tambigachon oh. uh, network oh. and the um, Ratasuda mm. uh, team. So they sent mm. some people mm. to train, and mm. and then after that, I, so if there's some space left, we contacted other people. Mm. Um, we've had uh, Daniel Kish or, or his team over twice now mm. so we've just finished the second second course mm. the first one was really just to train up our teacher trainees mm. into the skill mm -hmm. so the cane use uh, echolocation mm. mental mapping mm. we went to practice outside so mm. we had a lot of sponsors which mm. we're very grateful oh, for yeah. um, and a lot of uh, places allowed us to train there like mm. the zoo the national zoo mm -hmm. Um, uh, the other gold market and mm -hmm. um, and Esplanade mm -hmm. uh, Mall. They they allowed us to mm -hmm. to train as well as as, as many others. Um, so we mm -hmm. um, took them out to these areas and and made you know uh, mm -hmm. we we got them to practice it. Mm -hmm. So that's the first um, course, and then we've just had a second course where we've increased their skill and also um, started them on teaching adults. So they've started teaching other adults mm. now. Mm. And hopefully these adults may become teachers in mm. their own right. Mm. Um, so the next course will be um, trying to uh, train them to mm. to teach students, uh, young mm. young mm. children. No. So. so this is the first batch? Yes. Supposed to be first batch. Yes, right? the, the, they're the first group. And then group. The, they've also started training the second group. Okay. So hopefully we'll try to practice the second group um, in between the courses. Were you, were you there to, to see how? how yes, some of them. Really? Some, sometimes. The sound is not to be heard by normal people or particularly just for them? I mean, when they, they have to say something out? They today? Well, there are different ways yeah. of uh, doing echolocation. Yeah. This is from sitting uh. in the courses. Uh -huh. um, so there's I like to hear that. Yes, like yes, this is that. what I... So there's passive echolocation, which mm. is just listening to other people, you know, banging things and mm. um, to your cane tapping the floor. Uh -huh. and so things that happen incidentally, okay. and you can understand that noise. So that's passive. And then there's active echolocation where you make the sound so mm. you can mm. 
uh, understand your surroundings mm -hmm. more. Mm -hmm. So different ways of doing active echolocation. Mm -hmm. So people click mm -hmm. like that, mm -hmm. uh, clap. Y yes. Um, a clapping is louder mm -hmm. and it goes further, but obviously you can't do that all the time. Mm -hmm. And and what they do is um, click or flash sonar. So they click with their tongue like that. Oh. Um, and, and then they can hear the um, the echoes coming back and understand that. And also they have a little clicker that they can use as well. Um, oh. So different methods. Mm, very interesting. So um, can the echo, uh, re, uh, like what do you call, echolocation technique yes. apply to the people with the, like we said, the totally deformed blindness? At the moment. At the, at the moment. moment. So, so the similar with the, with the training with the different uh, methods with other with the less well, what I mean is um, they're totally blind and partially blind yes. using the same technique or different methods we, well I think it's the same we yeah. haven't had uh, people who are partially blind joining the group very mm. much we have mm. one or two um, trainers who can see some light mm. Um, mm. but it's not very clear mm. it, the, the light mm. is not you know uh, uh, functional mm. very much so our, our currently our training is in people who are blind or very nearly blind mm. but we will hope to expand the range mm. when when we have our own mm. uh, certified teachers mm. so we want to open up as, as to as many people as possible mm. so this is uh, it is very hopeful with this well I am very hopeful uh -huh. <laughs> And, and I think it gives them, you know, more freedom mm -hmm. in their daily lives. They don't have to depend on uh, people so much, um, and they can uh, go to areas, um, you know, geographical or physical areas where they haven't had to have mm -hmm. sighted people lead them around. Mm -hmm. So, tell me about um, one of the cases that uh, I don't, I don't remember his name, but uh, he is. I think the one who founder of this, I think, he's able to uh, ride on the m uh, mountain bike. Yes, well, oh. the, the team, the oh. team from World Access uh, to the Blind How can ride that? bicycles. I think, um, I mean, they can ride through through car parks and things already because they can know where the, where they know where the parked cars are. But this must are. be the familiar but place? Uh, is it important? Well, that is, but they also go on mountain bikes. Oh, that's why. Because... And um, it's a rough terrain. Yes. Yeah. Well. They, they can hear the sounds and also um, they have a lead bike as well mm. which I gather uh, has a bell or something so they can know roughly which direction it goes. Okay. Um, mm. I, I don't think they click all the way through mm. um, because it's I don't know but it's probably not fast enough but mm. in terms of which way they're going they have a lead bike. Mm -hmm. But I think Daniel goes hiking in the woods you know, with students and mm. as recreation, mm. so he does lots of other things too. Mm. Well, t uh, this 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 is a, a big, great leap up to the uh, to the life of one group of the people. So, uh, how about the capability of the foundation of the blind and the Mahidun University to to cope with this, to have it the training of the blind people in the human. Right. Call well, um, I, I, I've done this not as uh, part of Mahidon University, mm. really. Uh, mm. Although we've invited people from Ratchasuda, uh, which is Ratchasuda, which is the mm. sort of institute mm. that helped train um, disabled people. It's uh, Ratchasuda. It's what? It's a. Uh, it's is a blind school. No, uh, for a disabled. For disabled. Oh, yes, okay. Yes. All right. Um, uh -huh. So, we've invited some mm. of their people mm. in. Um, mm. So. But uh, I think, uh, so, so this is my activity is really mm. uh, part of volunteer group, although some mm. eye doctors from mm. Mahidon universities mm. have, have come mm. and uh, looked, at, looked mm. at the activities. Mm. Um, in terms of where to go from here, well, we're mm. hope, hoping that uh, the foundation mm. um, uh, to help the blind and the the Tamika Chon mm. Foundation mm. Um, will want to take this on as mm. a training because mm. I don't think I will be able to persist mm. uh, forever with this. Mm. Um, but uh, as 
as you know, as we're talking to them, I you know, I'm hopeful that they will uh, continue the training or. or set up courses or whatever mm -hmm. but um, so you you yourself working as a doctor at the Mahidun University yes mm -hmm. I am but I'm a gastroenterology uh, hepatology uh, doctor uh, so I look yeah. at bowels and livers uh -huh. and stuff like uh, that but uh, you have your eyes. own your volunteer how do you divide your time I mean to come and get into this also because uh, being a doctor is heavy serious uh, yes, jobs yes, yeah? uh, um, uh. well I have a lot of friends who mm. help actually oh, okay. and that's that's I find that's very valuable and I thank them very much mm. this would not be possible mm -hmm. without um, my mm -hmm. friends or my team who mm. have um, you know volunteered for this mm -hmm. we also have um, volunteer translators mm -hmm. because obviously Daniel Juan and Brian the, mm -hmm. the teachers from uh, uh, from America, mm. they speak in English, oh, and oh. we need to translate um, to capture all the information okay. um, to the students. So mm. we we have a group of volunteer uh, translators mm. who've come to help for all, you know throughout the course, mm. um, about ten mm. or so. So mm. um, you know without them again this will not be possible. Mm. The other thing is that we have tried to capture all the information mm. whilst they're here mm. um, obviously to, to to not waste any mm. um, time so mm. uh, we have had video cameras mm. to to document it um, a GDH uh, mm. 559 which mm. is a, a film production company have ah. have kindly um, oh. volunteered and and taken videos throughout the first uh, course okay. um, so they will have a documentary out on that on I think in March the 17th mm -hmm. so we have 12 episodes mm -hmm. um, 10 minutes which mm -hmm. will tell what's yeah. been happening mm -hmm. describe the the teaching mm -hmm. and then after that um, hopefully we'll have some YouTube clips Mm. of how to train oh, that is um, great. so for, for, for relatives or for uh, people who mm, are interested mm, to start training mm, or start practicing themselves mm, um, it won't be up to a very high skill perhaps but uh, it may start them off mm. um, and uh, so hopefully that's also something that we, we will have coming out in the future as well okay well uh, this is I, we also feel like um, share into it, you see, because whatever we can do, please let us know. Thank you. So I have a minute for you. Uh, you please convey the message uh, to raise more support or, of the project or uh, achieving your goal and helping the blind and you know, not also to live normally. Okay. Please well, do. Well, um, thank you very much for listening. Um, what I would like to say is that uh, I think what Daniel Kish and his uh, team have asked for is really some understanding mm. about mm. how um, blind people can mm. take charge of their lives mm. um, and they can use their uh, skills mm. to move around. Mm. Uh, one of the things that is problematic with sighted people mm. is that we sometimes look down on, on people who click exactly. thinking it's rude. Mm. So uh, that's just w the way they mm. um, they hear or see their surroundings yeah. so if you hear clicking or tapping mm -hmm. then then you know uh, understand that this is really their way of uh, seeing mm. um, so it's not rude or anything yeah so please so do understand really, and uh, we each of us uh, have hand to contribute whatever we can yes right thank you <laughs> thank you so we end up our program by thank you so much to associate professor dr momlong thaya kitiyakon head of the gastroenterology and hepatology division uh, faculty of medicine rama tibadi hospital thank you so much sir, for thank being you. here and uh, please come back <laughs> and let us know the progress and all that thank you very right. much thank you, so okay. We greatly appreciate Associate Professor Dr. Momlong Thaya Kitiyakon, Head of the Gastroenterology and Hepatology Division, Re Echo Location, Mahidon University, Faculty of Medicine, Rama Tibadi Hospital, for joining our program today and told us more about the training in human echo location to enable the blind to live 
on their own in comfort and in confidence. Thank you for watching Thailand today. I'm Kusuma Yota. Smooth hopes to see you again next time. Swadika. So,